Welcome back. In this problem, we're going to try to prove that the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. The key idea here is that this is very useful in many applications and in proving. And in fact, any mathematician or engineer or any students in college or university at least should know this. This is also good for students in high school. So if someone in high school and learns about this one and knows the proof, he can, he can do a lot of ideas and a lot of details proofs using this one. Okay? So what does this one say? So it says that if you take the sum of two numbers, take the their absolute value, it's going to be less than their absolute value individually. Okay? So the collective behavior is less than the individual behavior. Okay? It's a bit selfish, but it's called the triangular inequality. Because in a triangle, if you see that you have some triangle here, you always have this one is less than the sum of these two. But in triangles, we always have this defined as positive. So C is less than A plus B. But since A and B are positive, the absolute value get rid of it. Okay? And for us, we're going to use this... Uh, this idea of the absolute value to prove this result. So remember that the absolute value of some number, let's call it A, not X. So A is A if A is bigger than zero. It's minus A if A is less than zero. So the absolute value is like a machine that tries to make the number positive. Okay? So if it's positive, it leaves it like that. If it's negative, it gives it a minus sign to make it positive. So it's always, so therefore, this one is always bigger than zero. Okay, we can see it graphically here. So remember the graph of the function absolute value of x. Look here, it's always on top of the x axis. Okay, so this is why the absolute value of x, it's always bigger than zero. So this is our zero here. So it's always positive. So when x is positive, okay, so this is the function x, so it should be like this. But if x is positive, that means we are here, so we leave it as it is. When we are here, when x is negative, it takes these values, it gives, a, it gives them, they are here, we have a minus sign, so we flip them here to the top. Okay, it's a very useful idea. Okay, and another thing, another key that we can use here is that any number is less than its absolute value. Okay? We can see it graphically. Okay? Let's say this is a, this is our function x. Okay? This is y equals x. Its absolute value is this one. Let me do, use another color so to make it easy. So the one in green, the one in green is the absolute value of x. So it's always bigger than x. Look, this is our x. So it's here. The one in green is the absolute value of x. So it's always bigger than x. Okay? So when, when both of them are positive, they are the same thing. But when they are negative, that's the problem. So the absolute value of x is always bigger than x. Okay? So we're going to use that fact. So to prove this result, we're going to take the square of this one. Okay? So we're going to square x plus y absolute value square. So when we square something, what happens to the absolute value? Is Are these two the same? Yeah, because in this case, this is positive. So the absolute value is positive. That means it's here. So it's there is no error in this one. Okay? Both of them are positive, so we, we get rid of the square, the, the, the absolute value. And we keep this one. What do we know about this? So this is x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. 
Okay, so that means x plus y, absolute value squared, is this quantity. Here, we're going to use this fact here. That the absolute value, that x is less than its absolute value. And y is less than its absolute value. And another thing is that the absolute value of two numbers is just the absolute value of each one of them. Okay. Here, we can prove this result. Okay. So we can say, uh, uh, we, we have four cases, in fact, to prove this result, if we want to use the definition. So we can say that the absolute value of AB is AB if A is bigger than zero, B is bigger than zero. Okay. And this one, when, when A and B are both bigger than zero, what's the absolute value of A? When A is bigger than zero, its absolute value is just A. And the absolute value of B is just B. So we have this case. When A is, it's minus AB, when A is negative, B is positive. Okay? So what's the absolute value when A is negative? So this is what this is absolute value of a when a is negative and b its absolute value and you keep working on these cases you will have uh, the other case when you flip so here you flip these two cases you have a a is negative b is negative in that case you have a minus minus. Any, any, anyway you get the, the idea of proving this one by just doing the cases let's go back here so here use this fact so x times y okay so x times y is less than x times y and according to this rule here so x times y is just the absolute value of x so i i I said, I, I proved this one here. So the absolute value of x times y is, x, y is less than the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. So from here we get x plus y squared is less than x squared plus y squared plus 2, the absolute value of x, the absolute value of y. And what's x squared? The absolute value of x squared is just x squared it's always positive okay so here we have the absolute value of x squared plus the absolute value of y squared plus 2x absolute value absolute value of y and here using our algebra we get x plus y squared now we have the absolute value of x plus y squared is less than this now if we take the square root these qualities are both positive so we don't need the absolute value anymore it, when we do the square root. So we get x plus y is less than x plus y. And that's what we needed to prove. Okay. So I think I did explain all the steps here. Okay. All the steps, all the questions that you made, you might ask is that for this case here, this one here, just think of it this way. Okay. Think of it this way here. Do the four cases. Okay, if you get stuck, do the four cases here and you will get to this. For this one here, we passed from the equal sign to less than equal, less than or equal by this from here. Okay, and this, I think this finishes our result. Okay, everything here, we explained this one. I started this one, I did some graphical explanation for this. And what else did I miss? I did explain this. I will know this one graphically. And here we know this one, we have Y, we know this. I did explain it here. Okay, what's the other thing? Here, we have an explanation for this. And therefore, I don't think anything left for us, okay? The only thing that's left is that we try it with some examples. You can do that, okay? 
you can do anything. Take y is minus 2x, or x is 3 minus 3 y's, and you will see that it's, or x equals y, or anything. Try it, and you will see that you will always get this one. This is called the triangular inequality. That's the last thing that we need to write, triangular inequality. Remember this one, you will see it everywhere in proofs if you need it. Okay, this ends our video.